Firstly, I remember two particularly, well, I was about to say happy weeks. Some of the days were happy, but God, it did drag on a little bit. I was in Glasgow for COP26 this time last year. Did that achieve anything? Um, I think it did. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, for the, for the first time, really, it was, it was one of the bigger COPs that sort of happened once every five years. I think we brought a lot of the, the world's uh, main leaders together uh, and we, get, we got some real progress. Not as much as we need, but we got some real progress. I think what we need to look at now is what's happened since and have all the promises that were made back then have they been adhered to? And I think that that's a question um, that I'm, I would I would uh, suggest that uh, it needs to be asked because I, I think there's a lot of people rolling back on the promises they made at COP26. I suppose this is the crucial point about COP. There's literally no point in just one country committing to do something here. If it's just the United Kingdom that says, we're going to get to net zero by 2050 and no one else does it, we're not going to solve the issue. In fact, we're just going to cripple our own economy. So it's really, really crucial that other countries do the same and that we all move together at the same pace. Um, to a degree, I think you're right, uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't lead the way. Um, I, I would, I would disagree with you that that it uh, would cripple our economy to go into a, a, a green economy. I think that that uh, that is ultimately the direction of travel that everybody will have to go in. I think it's quite feasible to have um, a, a vibrant economy. Um, and, and a green economy at the same time. In fact, it's crucial that we do. Uh, and where we're going with engineering, where we're going with you know uh, energy, where we're going with with transport, um, I think we need to push push harder. And I, and I do think that Britain can lead the way. But you're right; we, it's a global issue, and we need global solutions to it. Now, looking at some of the big no shows this year in Sharm El Sheikh, mm -hmm. uh, the Indian Prime Minister is not going. The uh, 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 Chinese, I are we supposed to call him Chairman Xi now that he's uh, President for Life? Well, President Xi of China's not there. Uh, uh, the Australian Prime Minister is not there. Some of the biggest polluters in the world are not attending, not even uh, Canada making its full uh, diplomatic representations. Uh, wh wh why, why should we be so involved if some of the big oil, gas and coal people of the world aren't? Uh, again, two of the biggest polluters, China and India, not going to COP. Um, but I do think that that, uh, that uh, as globally we can put pressure on these people, we can on these countries, we can make sure that um, that uh, when we are purchasing from these countries, that we're only purchasing from you know the, uh, what we import is is produced produced from a green uh, a, a green economy. Um, but we do we, we have to do we can't do nothing. You know, we can't just sit back and go, they're not doing it, and therefore we're not doing it. We have to try and gather and galvanise as much of the world's population as we possibly can and keep pulling them in. China actually has made some significant progress. They're still massive polluters, but they've made some significant progress. And we've got to keep encouraging them. We've got to bring them into the fold as much as we can. So it is, you are right to an extent, but we have to keep trying to, to, to raise the bar Year on year on year, because well, there's no other option for us, actually.